Well, hello there. I just finished a recording late night update that you're going to see tonight with the Detective Cagney as we really get into everything happening as uh, this World War III is now unfolding. Uh, we're going to get a, a European perspective and we're going to uh, compare and contrast of what's taking place in Russia with NATO and Finland. These are some crucial times. These are historical times, but these are our times. So uh, stay tuned, stay awake, and prepare for a late night update. Big return later tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern. Don't want to miss it. Fox News alert. We're waiting to see how Israel responds to Iran's unprecedented attack this weekend. The IDF says this launch of so many missiles, cruise missiles and UAVs into the territory of the state of Israel will be met with a response. We will do whatever is necessary to protect the state of Israel. Texas Congressman Randy Weber is leading the effort to condemn Iran with a landmark, landmark bipartisan resolution that is being unveiled today. And before that, he joins us right now. Congressman, good morning to you. So Israel has made it clear they are going to respond. And we're hearing that this response could be imminent. What is your reaction to that? And what does that mean for us and our security here at home? Well, Don Garley, thanks for having me. Uh, it's about time that uh, people around the world uh, understood that Iran is the leading exporter of terrorism. Israel has been the brunt of it for a long time. As you well know, uh, the, the uh, upper echelon, if you will, in Iran calls Israel the, the little Satan and America the great Satan. So uh, we shouldn't be paying attention. We shouldn't be condemning everything like that Iran does. And actually, we should be banning everything they export with all kinds of sanctions and making sure that they feel the pain of being... <laughs> Welcome to another late night update right here at Real Deal Media's newsroom. I'm your late night host, Dean Ryan, and tonight we're going to look and examine the entire World War III as it's unfolding, or is it, but from a Eastern European perspective and angle with our very own Detective Cagney. And within that, we're going to try to compare and contrast what we all experienced with the Ukrainian and Russian debacle, and even now with Finland as new adversary of Moscow or the challenger to the throne, we're gonna be comparing and contrasting both parallel proxy wars and wars that are about to go extremely kinetic to the next level. Right here, we're gonna be getting to it. So brace yourself. Welcome back, Detective Cagney here to Late Night Update. Cagney, thank you for being here tonight. Hi, thanks, Dean. Let me just get your just uh, cold, fresh out of the water. What's your take on uh, what's now unfolding uh, in the Middle East with uh, Israel? Well, my first comment would be is that this is nothing new. I mean, this has been Israel all along. This is, this is, this is their behavior. This is how they've been. They've been edging for this for a long time. And if they think that by doing sanctions, it's going to help anybody, it's not. We, that was proven via Russia that doing sanctions did not did not help anybody. If anything, it hurt the economy and the U.S. is playing along. And the problem is going to be more centrally located in the U.S. If something does actually break out, then it will be here in Europe because Europe isn't quite the enemy that the U.S. is with Iran. You know, Iran has uh, just kind of historically, at least since the late 1970s, they've had this very dark and negative connotation uh, to them, according to Western media. Politics, the battle among the Democrats. But we think the crisis in Iran is more urgent right now than the campaign here at home. 
some 60 Americans, including our fellow citizen whom you just saw bound and blindfolded, are now beginning their sixth day of captivity inside the U.S. Embassy in Tehran. To the Iranian demonstrators who set fire to it, this was a symbol of victory. Dare I say, you kind of remember the, the 1979 revolution with um, the Ayatollah Khomeini. Uh, you want to talk about that because prior to that, it, nobody I, I can imagine was ever thinking about Iran, but the fact that they sit at the Strait of Hormuz now saying, okay, come on and attack us, even gives them a darker connotation. Just how afraid of Iran should all of us be right now. Well, I, I think that if, if they if Iran was really going to do anything, it would have been done a long time ago. This is a provocation coming from Israel once again. So, yes, people's opinion of Iran is probably no different than the wrong opinion people had in Gaza as well. It's the general Muslim issue that people seem to have. And taking it as a, a, a country that everyone is against the U.S., the people are not. The people are not. Maybe governments are. But once again, we're, we're escalating this into assuming that all the people that live in Iran hate the U.S. or all the people that lived in Gaza hate the U.S. and Israel. It's, it's just simply not true. Yeah, it's simply not true. You know, uh, there's a, been a real effort throughout Europe. Let's talk about this is Germany. Uh, first off, the unions in Germany, particularly in the airports, said they're done transferring weapons to uh, Israel. And here we are, 40,000 Palestinians dead. What are we to take from this? Because you see Biden now backing out, the Biden character uh, in the West as well. You see Macron, who's uh, trying to make a deal with the Israel right now because Iran holds the keys to the oil, which everything goes up. So let's talk about the, the, the worldwide effect here as uh, people are looking at Israel, it may probably a little different and then I want to talk about what are we going to see in the aftermath of this? Because that's a key, key uh, component here. But, uh, Cagney, what, what are your thoughts on the uh, the new glasses everybody seems to be wearing? Well, the first thought that I have, and it, it, it's just a thought, but considering that Germany airlines went on strike again, I mean, they, they go on strike frequently, but everything was on strike in Germany again several weeks ago. All flights were canceled. Tunza wasn't flying, blah, blah, blah. I have to wonder if that timing wasn't that they pulled all the airlines out so that they could actually transport, leave the airspace free and clear to transport whatever they needed to transport to Israel without having uh, domestic flights or international flights coming in and out of the airports. I mean, to me, the timing is, is critical on when they have these, these walkouts. It just seems too planned to me. Do I think that there's something else going on? Absolutely. I think that, you know, the, the plan is going to backfire, just like it backfired when Israel and Gaza started this whole thing. It, it keeps backfiring. So Demented Joe keeps having to change his strategy because he, the, the administration is just looking really bad. They keep picking the wrong thing. Yeah, they keep getting uh, the actors who have dementia to play Joe Biden. I don't understand. Is, are, is the actor strike that real? But uh, to... <laughs> To piggyback off uh, just uh, that sentiment there, uh, you even have Hungary and uh, Viktor Orban that says that they don't want any more free passage uh, from, from Germany, weapons transfers to and through uh, Hungary. Uh, that is, he took some flack for that. And then pff, right away, it's being reported in the West that, um, you know, th there's huge protests against Viktor Orban. It's, it's simply not true. I mean, I'm here. No, I, there's always protests everywhere in Europe. OK, let's 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 clarify that. Europe is like one for protesting um, because you change the price of Band-Aids. It, it's just the way it goes here. As far as big protests against Orban, no. I, I have been walking the city. I sent you footage not that long ago of my late night walks. There's, none of this is going on. It's, it's all the Western media propaganda BS that, that they're stating. But, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of protest, a lot of protest. And I saw this coming from a mile away. We, we've been through this. We've seen uh, throughout the Vietnam War how these, uh, the infiltration of communists and then the, uh, the federales, if you will. And they're blocking traffic now. So 
where I was 20 years ago is not knowing any better, seeing the people protesting the, the uh, Iraq war and just how kind of fringe and patchouli oil uh, driven and, and uh, induced they were. Uh, I didn't identify with that as a very young person. And here, here we are, fast forward. Well, now we have we have Trump rallies where his own base is saying genocide Joe, genocide Joe. Problem. So my question is, um, I don't think Israel is going to strike, even though the Mark Levins of the world, they want the, the Samsonite option. And then do whatever they have to do to win. So put that on the table of debate now. What are they going to do if they're surrounded? What are they going to do if 150,000 advanced missiles are going to be shot? What are they going to do if Iran gets involved? Well, they can't win a conventional war. What are they going to do? I think I know what they do. I know what we would do. We would destroy the enemy because otherwise we're exterminated. That's all I have to say. Well, Mark, you, br you brought up nu nuclear war. I if mean Israel is going to face annihilation, you think they have those nukes in there to collect dust? I am saying Iran needs to understand, and Hezbollah needs to understand, that if you think you're going to wipe out these people, you're not. And so we have to deal with reality. And reality is, but America's involved in this. Amer America... I said they're going to drop them. In my opinion, they might. What are we going to see in the aftermath of this? How is this going to look? Because on one hand, you have a criminal court, a, a world criminal court with uh, genocide charges, war crimes, and on and on and on against the cabinet of Israel, uh, against uh, Netanyahu. But on the other hand, if the, that cabinet, if that uh, crime minister does not proceed to have a greater war like Zelensky, what is this going to look like in the aftermath? I, I think they're going to oust... BD because uh, there's too many people even in his own country that are against him. He's doomed either way. Okay, so it just depends on which of the lesser of two evils he wants. I mean, he's if he doesn't move forward, then some of the people they say 40%, but by whose data are they talking that 40% of the people of Israel actually want this to happen? You know, data is manipulatory. So I don't necessarily believe that that is actually true. However, if he goes forward and starts a war, then the rest of the world is going to have a problem with it. So we've got an issue there. If he doesn't, I don't really believe there's going to be war crimes prosecution. There doesn't seem to be any, any flack for anybody who's doing anything bad these days. I mean, whether it be in the U.S. or if it's in the Middle East, whatever, no one is prosecuting anyone. I've been hearing all about you know, prosecution that's going to happen for the last several years, and it does not happen. So I don't think they're really fearful that there's going to be someone that's going to say, oh, well, it's genocide. You know, what happened in Gaza, we're going to prosecute. I, I don't believe that that's going to happen. There's no accountability. Right. Yeah. What, what, whatever happened to uh, Cheney and Bush and that whole uh, regime, nothing really. You know, nothing happened. But, uh, you know, his own courts, I think he's more uh, concerned about uh, the stand down order for, what, eight hours? See, everyone seems to forget that part of this whole story. And that is the, the canary in the coal mine, in a sense, uh, because that really is the key to understanding the fraudulence of it all. OK, so but uh, I want to now I, I want to now change uh, gears here. I want to get to uh, Russia. I want to get to Eastern Europe and NATO and the new opponent of Russia who stepped into the cage match here with uh, Vladimir Putin. That is Finland. Well, yes, Finland has now come out of the uh, woodworks of obscurity saying uh, uh, we can fight, too. We can fight, too. I mean, let's talk about this now. Just how worried is that whole region of Finland who has a big, bad uh, Arctic uh, army? Well, OK, first of all, when we talk about Finland, they have a minimal military there. Finland has a, a land border, obviously, with Russia. Um, they have they have troops, but they don't have anything compared to what Russia is. So it, it's actually kind of laughable that they think that they're going to go up against Russia. Uh, I, I I can't imagine. I mean, we, they would be they'd be done just like Ukraine was done in no time. Finland is just not that strong. Also, understand what they're trying to say is they're saying that Finland has one of the strongest artillery capabilities in Europe. Uh, no, I, I they don't. 
but this is what they're trying to promote so that people will say that, oh, good, we've got uh, Finland joining NATO now, and uh, therefore we've got the strength against Russia. Well, they may have one of the stronger artilleries in Europe, but Europe doesn't have a lot of strong artilleries to begin with. So what are you comparing it to? Let's compare what does Finland have compared to what Russia has, and then we could be talking at adequate comparisons. I want to bring it uh, back here to uh, the domestics uh, right here in good old U.S. of A. And I, I, there's just a lot of, um, there's kind of been a lot of warnings, a lot of headlines, uh, of course, over the since October which I still don't understand. Maybe you can help me. I mean, you have people like the the FBI head, Ray, and other kind of publications saying Hamas might attack. Hezbollah, the lone gunmen's wolves, may come to uh, America and attack in revenge. Well, yeah. check this out here, because now there's been shootings all over the place. In particular, one of the big blue uh, cities, Chicago. Well, let's look at this clip in... Uh, Shit. Well, that seems to be the case. It's now Marina Del Rey, California, Chicago, Illinois, New York. Okay, let's talk about it now because. We now have the the lone gunmen in several states. Even Australia is feeling the heat uh, two times in a row, all simultaneously. And I'm thinking to myself, who benefits from these attacks that uh, just conveniently uh, are being labeled as revenge from Iran? Uh, what's your take on this? Well, first of all, let me say that going as far back as October, the U.S. Uh, cities were, were boosting their security as fears with the Israeli Hamas things going on. The intelligence warned of potential violence for days. U.S. cities are bolstering security. Uh, what a potentially wider Israel Hamas war could be. These are all the news. This is going all the way back in October. This is six months ago. So what's happening now is nothing, nothing new. They've been talking about this for six months. Now, as far as these loan attacks that are happening, they're not really loan attacks, Dean. I mean, this stuff goes on in Chicago every weekend. So what they're trying to do is highlight what's happening there this particular weekend to try and show that it's happening worldwide. Look what's happening in Chicago and New York. It happens every weekend in these cities. This is, this is nothing new. I, I, I think it's not connected, but they're just trying to flag it. And they're pulling specific incidents to make it look like something is going on in order to create a false flag narrative. Yes, they are. And just in time to uh, get a, a little support and a budget for the war. Kind of in a final um, sunset here. Uh, we now see Speaker of the House and uh, who we coined uh, Father of the Year, Mike Johnson, uh, still, still pushing for just billions and billions of, of just aid, right? You know, what does that mean? Uh, very unpopular. Uh, the, the mainstream urine soaked media it likes to say a very, very splintered GOP, but I, th I don't really think it's splintered. I think it is 10% of the people who are invested into the defense wartime industries that want these wars as opposed to 80, 90 percent of anybody who is just American at this point that don't want the wars. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the political pathway forward here, because Trump has uh, historically just been very, very pro-Israel. Or was he very pro keeping certain adversaries closer for a reason? You know, we don't really know. I mean, every time we talk about Trump, <clears throat> I say the same thing. We don't know what he's really thinking because he's, he hasn't been on the fast track in front of any, anybody to discuss what's really on his mind. Now, what's going on behind the scenes? You don't know. I don't know. No one really knows what his plan is. Has he kept Israel close? Um, I would say that he's keeping it close enough to try and keep peace. Does he believe that Israel is in the right? I, I don't know that that's necessarily what, he, what he's thinking. So there's a lot of assumptions that are being made on what he's doing or, or who he's for or against because he hasn't laid his cards out on that table. He hasn't called uh, full house yet. Is, is Trump going to be the prince of peace going into November? 
Do you see that? Because Genocide Joe is a growing trend uh, that uh, is just sweeping the nation at this point. Well, I would say, in my opinion, that Trump could be the Prince of Peace. I think he has a plan in his mind. But whether or not he's going to be able to be the savior, again, it doesn't matter if 99 percent of everybody in the United States feels that Trump is the best candidate. That does not mean he is going to win if, in fact, there is an election because he, he should have won last time, too. I mean, it means nothing. So we can put all the, the bets on the table that if he comes in, he's going to straighten it all out. The question is, will he be allowed to step in? Well, as we kind of sunset the late night here. Uh, who would I be if I didn't ask a fellow Chicago native like Cagney about the most recent news uh, that uh, is now coming about of where are they now kind of ordeal? And no, I'm not talking about the old man Chicago or Chicago Cubs baseball players. Well, I'm talking about our favorite, one of our favorites. Lori Stankfoot, the former mayor of Chicago, is now soon to be a detective. Check this out, and we'll get uh, Detective Cagney's take on someone who's now perhaps in her very own industry. Here it is. Lightfoot says she is committed to getting down to the facts, and the Board of Trustees points to her experience as a federal prosecutor and private attorney to get the job done. A standing ovation Monday night from Dalton residents as former Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot accepts her appointment as special investigator. The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. Well, now you're, you're actually being vindicated that uh, bad behavior does get rewarded in the real world, especially Chicago. Uh, what's your take on, I guess, a newfound uh, direction or career for your uh, former mayor there? Well, first of all, I'm sitting here shaking my head. For Understand that Dalton is, it's not really a city. It's a village in Cook County. Their population is around 20,000 people. It's, it's nothing. I mean, there's... <laughs> It's just a little teeny tiny little place with high crime. Um, the demographics there is is not a not a good one. Uh, there is a good bar there though. It's called the Wishing Well. Anyway, um, I, I four hundred dollars <laughs> an hour. Four hundred dollars an hour. Stankfoot now, Mayor Stankfoot. Uh, check this out. This is uh, just came into the Real Deal Media newsroom. Well, here she is, in all her glory. <laughs> uh, she's an engineer, uh, an undercover engineer, I might add. So. There you have it. That is something else there. A lot of people may not know, but uh, you live on Eastern Europe and you kind of uh, waltz all over the place in the moonlight sonatas of everything to the gondola boats. I think you take uh, all throughout uh, the area. But recently, Cagney uh, shared a bit of her backyard as she was traveling. Well, here it is. This is uh, Budapest. So that is the Budapest Opera House. We're on a main street here. Uh, this street is the probably the most expensive street in the city. So as we're kind of watching this, uh, this was for our Real Deal members. Uh, Cagney, you want to talk about just kind of the beauty of the architecture throughout Europe, but in this case, Budapest, and what uh, got you to fall in love with the city as you showed the Real Deal members? Well, the architecture here is obviously outstanding. And considering that in the United States, everything is only a couple hundred years old. Well, geez, that's modern. It's modern here in, in Budapest because this country has been around on the map for a very, very long time. So therefore, um, you know, to, just to look at the architecture, you could, you could spend days just analyzing the buildings and, and the crumblings and the peeling back, the onion look of all the different buildings here because uh, each, each building has, well, I don't think there's very many. There's no skyscrapers, but all the buildings have uh, a lot of Turkish influence, a lot of Roman influence. It's a fabulous city and the people are great. People are great. And, you know, I'm surprised that 
uh, you were not arrested. You were jaywalking the whole time. I think that you caused a, uh, was it a five car uh, pileup? So you're lucky that uh, we still have you. Uh, but thank you for that. And you could definitely see more of Cagney's uh, adventures on Cagney's Corner uh, as she continues to uh, tour all over the place as a, uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful uh, specimen. Uh, uh, any final thoughts, uh, Cagney, before we close the late night uh, update? Any final thoughts as we um, witness history before our eyes? Well, and I'm going to say it one more time. That let's not believe what you're you're seeing in the media. Know that there's false flags that are being set up. Uh, I, I'm not saying that I'm a huge fan of Iran, I'm, but I'm saying that what is being propagated is no different than what we witnessed watching the Ukraine debacle unfold i mean it's 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 a lot to take in people and you really need to not or right off the bat claim that these countries are bad there's so much more to it there's so much more propaganda that's happening and being pushed out from different governments especially the united states and canada so keep you keep tuned we'll see what happens keep tuned spoken like a true hamas supporter you hear that everybody oh, Unbelievable. Thank you, Cagney, for your wonderful uh, intellect and prowess and your uh, tour tour guide skills are just second to none. Thank you very much. Well, there you have it. Well, that was the leader of Hamas. Unbelievable who we can get on this show. But uh, we'll be back after this message. Well, that was uh, quite a, a journey we just took there with uh, Detective Cagney that uh, brought us from all the way to Chicago to the eastern regions of Europe and then back to the Middle East. This is a wild world as uh, every folklore, every myth within that, uh, there, there's ounces of truth. And hopefully the ounces of truth is that uh, the Third Reich never fulfilled their mission of the superior dominating DNA and hopefully in this case that the the objective of madmen gone crazy gone uh, warmongering war hawks hopefully their agenda falls flat on its face even the opposing side as well and to borrow the old phrase of uh, peace in the Middle East has never been more prevalent than now so that's uh, we're gonna keep our eye on the ball here at uh, late night update but uh, in the meanwhile We'll keep you informed accordingly. So I want to thank Detective Cagney for joining me here tonight as her perspective is so needed in these very, very critical times. So I want to thank her for that. You can catch me on the fly, but you can also catch me on the nightly over there at World at War. So for Detective Cagney and for the rest of us here at Real Deal Media, I'm Dean Ryan saying thank you for sharing a bit of your late night with all of us here. Till next time, always remember to stay tuned and stay awake. Good night, everybody.